Chapter Ten of the Adventures of Bindle by Herbert Jenkins. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Don W. Jenkins. Chapter Ten: The Downfall of Mister Jabez Stiffson. One. The next morning, Bindle let Missus Sedge in at her usual time, seven o'clock. Now mind, mother," he said. Four eggs and plenty of bacon and coffee. Number six has got a appetite. Add no supper, poor gal. Mrs. Sedge grunted. Kilburn Cemetery had a depressing effect upon her. I'll take it up myself, remarked Bindle casually. Mrs. Sedge eyed him deliberately. She's pretty, then, she said. Ain't you men just all alike? She proceeded to shake her head in hopeless despair. Bindle stood watching her as she descended to the Hart's kitchen. "'She's got an headpiece on her, as old Sedgy,' he muttered. "'Fancy her a-tumblin' to it like that, and her still half full o' Royal Richard.' Having prepared and eaten his own breakfast, Bindle sat down and waited. At five minutes past nine he rose. "'It's time Oscar and old Whiskers was up and doin,' he murmured as he stood in front of the dingy-looking glass over the fireplace. "'Joe Bindle, there's a-goin' to be rare doin's in number six to-day, and it may mean that you'll lose your job, you old reprobate.' At the head of the stairs of the second floor Bindle stopped as if he had been shot. "'Old me Horace he muttered, "'if it ain't er Running towards him was Miss Boy in a white silk wrapper, a white lace matinee cap, her stockingless feet thrust into dainty slippers. Bindle eyed her appreciatively. "'Oh, Mr. Porter!' she cried breathlessly. "'There's a man in my bath!' "'A what, miss?' inquired Bindle, in astonishment. "'A man! I heard him splashing, and I peeped in. I only just peeped, you know, Mr. Porter, and there was a funny little man in spectacles with whiskers. Isn't it lovely?' she cried, clapping her hands gleefully. "'Where could he have come from?' "'Well, personally, myself, I shouldn't call him lovely,' muttered Bindle. "'I suppose it's only a matter of taste.' but where did he come from persisted sissy boy excitedly he must have been left behind by the other tenant said bindle grinning widely i must see into this now you'd better get back miss you mustn't go up and about like this or i'll lose my job why don't i look nice asked miss boy archly looking down at herself that's just it miss said bindle if number seven or number eighteen was to see you like that well anything might happen now we'll find out about this man what you think has got into your bath followed by miss boy bindle entered the outer door of number six as he did so mr stiffson emerged from the bathroom in a faded pink bathrobe and yellow felt slippers with a towel over his shoulder and a sponge in his hand he gave one startled glance past bindle at sissy boy and with a strange noise in his throat turned and fled back into the bathroom bolting the door behind him isn't he a scream gurgled miss boy oh what would bobby say like a decree of fate bindle marched up to the bathroom door and knocked imperiously what is it inquired mr stiffson in a trembling voice it's me responded bindle sternly open the door sir if you please i can't have you a frightenin this young lady tell her to go away and then i'll come out was the response miss boy giggled you'd better come out sir there was decision in bindle's voice i'll go into my room she whispered and then i'll come out again see bindle did see and nodded his head vigorously miss boy disappeared she ain't here now sir he said so you'd better come out the bathroom door was cautiously opened and mr stiffson looked out with terror dilated eyes is she really of course she is said bindle reassuringly fancy you being afraid of a pretty little bit of fluff like that but but she was in her of course she was she was going to have a rinse in there bindle indicated the bathroom with his thumb when you frightened her dirty trick a frightening of a pretty gal like that with affected indifference bindle strolled over to the bathroom looked in and then stood before the door look there she is again almost shrieked mr stiffson dashing for bindle and endeavouring to get past him into the bathroom there there sir said bindle soothingly you're a very lucky cove only you don't seem to know it but but mrs stiffson 
there was a terror in mr stiffson's voice on his forehead beads of perspiration glistened what the wife don't see the husband don't have to explain remarked bindle oracularly but she's in my flat persisted mr stiffson oh you naughty old thing cried sissy boy it's you who are in my flat but i came in last night quavered mr stiffson so did i didn't i mr porter she turned to bindle for corroboration take my dying oath on it miss said bindle but began mr stiffson then stopped at loss how to proceed look here said bindle pleasantly there's been a little mistake sort of a misunderstanding and things have got a bit mixed up you can say it's me what's done it if you like now you'd better both get dressed and come and have breakfast then turning to mr stiffson he said don't you think o meetin your missus on an empty stomach i'm married myself and missus b's as ought as ginger when there's another bit of skirt about sissy boy slowly approached mr stiffson you're surely not afraid of little me mr man she inquired looking deliciously impudent that was exactly what mr stiffson was afraid of and he edged nearer to bindle but mrs stiffson he stammered regarding sissy boy like one hypnotized oh you naughty old thing admonished miss boy enjoying mr stiffson's embarrassment you come into my flat then talk about your wife and she laughed happily now look ere sir said bindle there's been a little mistake and this young lady is willin to forgive and forget and you ain't a-goin to old out are you now you just run in and get rid of them petticoats come out lookin like a man and then what o oh, for a nice little breakfast which'll all be over before your missus turns up at ten o'clock see you can trust me married myself i am he added as if to explain his breadth of view in such matters but i can't began mr stiffson oh yes you can sir and what's more you'll like it bindle gently propelled the protesting mr stiffson past sissy boy towards his room don't forget now in a quarter of an hour i'll be up with the coffee and bacon and eggs you're a rare lucky cove sir only you don't know it i'm so hungry wailed sissy boy of course you are miss said bindle sympathetically i'll get a move on oh isn't he delicious gurgled sissy boy isn't he a perfect scream but how did he get here mr porter well miss the only wonder to me is that aft fulham ain't ere to see you a lookin like that now you just get a rinse in your room and a rinse what's that inquired sissy you does it with soap and water miss and you might add a bit or two of lace just in case the neighbours was to come in now i must be orf old sedgy ain't at her best after them aft days with royal richard now don't let him nip orf miss will you bindle added anxiously ease that modest and retiring like that he might try at that moment mr stiffson put his head out of his door porter he stammered oscar has not had his breakfast it's on the kitchen mantelpiece he shut the door hurriedly oscar's got to wait muttered bindle as he hurried downstairs ten minutes later he had the gas stove lighted in the sitting-room and coffee eggs and bacon bread and butter strawberry jam and marmalade ready on the table miss boy emerged from her room a vision of loveliness in a pale blue tea-gown open at the throat with a flurry of white lace cascading down the front there was a good deal of sissy boy visible in spite of the lace she still wore her matinee cap with the blue ribbons and bindle frankly envied mr stiffson now sir he cried banging at the laggard's door the coffee and the ladies waitin and i want to feed oscar mr stiffson came out timidly he evidently realized the importance of the occasion he wore a white satin tie reposing beneath a low collar of nonconformity a black frock coat with a waistcoat that had been bought at a moment of indecision as to whether it should be a morning or evening affair light trousers and spats my ain't we dressy cried bindle looking appreciatively at mr stiffson's trousers you got her beaten with them bags sir or my name ain't joe bindle mr stiffson coughed nervously behind his hand now continued bindle you've got a good hour then we must see what's to be done i'll keep the old bird away the old bird questioned mr stiffson in a thin voice as he opened the door but oscar is only i meant your missus sir explained bindle you leave her to me come on mr man cried sissy boy don't be afraid i never eat men when there's eggs and bacon 
Mr. Stiffson motioned Bindle to accompany him into the sitting-room. "'I've got to see Oscar,' said Bindle reassuringly. "'Now sit down,' ordered Sissy Boy. Mr. Stiffson seated himself on the edge of the chair opposite to her. She busied herself with the coffee, bacon, and eggs. Mr. Stiffson watched her with the air of a man who is prepared to bolt at any moment. He cast anxious eyes towards the clock. It pointed to a quarter to nine. Bindle had taken the precaution of putting it back an hour. Suddenly Oscar burst into full song. Mr. Stiffson sighed his relief. Oscar had had his breakfast. "'Now, Mr. Man, eat,' commanded Sissy Boy, "'and, handing him a cup of coffee, drink.' "'And be merry, sir,' added Bindle, who entered at the moment. "'You're having the time of your life, and don't you forget it.' Mr. Stiffson looked as if the passage of centuries would never permit him to forget. "'And now I'll leave you, little lovebirds,' said Bindle, with the cheerful assurance of a Cupid, "'and go and keep watch.' "'But,' pouted Mr. Stiffson, half rising from his chair, "'Oh, do sit down, old thing,' cried Sissy. "'You're spoiling my breakfast.' Mr. Stiffson subsided. Destiny had clearly taken a hand in the affair. "'Now you just enjoy your little selves,' apostrophized Bindle. "'And then we'll try and find out how all this ere happened. It does me blowed if it don't.' Two. "'I'm not aware that I speak indistinctly.' The voice was uncompromising, the deportment aggressive. "'I said Mr. Jabez Stiffson.' "'You did, Mum,' agreed Bindle tactfully. "'I heard you myself, quite plainly.' "'Then where is he? I'm Mrs. Stiffson.' Mrs. Stiffson was a tall woman of generous proportions. Her hair was grey, her features virtuously hard, her manner overwhelming. Her movements gave no suggestion of limbs. She seemed to wheel along with a slight swaying of the body from side to side. "'Well?' she interrogated. "'He's sort of engaged, Mum,' temporized Bindle. "'Havin' breakfast. I'll tell him your ear. I'll break it gently to him. You know, Mum, joy sometimes kills, and he don't look strong.' Without a word, Mrs. Stiffson wheeled round, and, ignoring the lift, marched for the stairs. As he followed, Bindle remembered with satisfaction that he had omitted to close the outer door of number six. Straight up the stairs, like never-ending time, marched Mrs. Stiffson. She did not hurry. She did not pause as she climbed evenly, mechanically, a model wife seeking her mate. Any doubts that Bindle may have had as to Mrs. Stiffson's ability to find the husband she sought were set at rest by the shrill pipings of Oscar. Even a trained detective could not have overlooked so obvious a clue. Along the corridor, straight for number six, moved Mrs. Stiffson, Bindle in close attendance, fearful lest he should lose the dramatic intensity of the arrival of the wronged wife. Unconscious that Nemesis was marching upon him, Mr. Stiffson, stimulated by the coffee, bacon, and eggs, and the gay insouciance of Sissy Boy, was finding the situation losing much of its terror for him. No man for long could remain indifferent to the charming personality of Sissy Boy. Her bright chatter and good looks, her innocence strangely blended with worldly wisdom, her daring garb all combined to divert Mr. Stiffson's mind from the thoughts of his wife, apart from which the clock pointed to five minutes past nine, and Mrs. Stiffson was as punctual as fate. Had he possessed the intuition of a mongoose, Mr. Stiffson would have known that there was a snake in his grass. Instinct guiding her steps, Mrs. Stiffson entered the flat. Instead of turning to the right in the direction of the bedroom in which Oscar was overdoing the Thanksgiving business for bird seed and water, she wheeled to the left and threw open the sitting-room door. From under Mrs. Stiffson's right arm, Bindle saw the tableau. Mr. Stiffson, who was facing the door, was in the act of raising his coffee cup to smiling lips. Sissy Boy, sitting at right angles on his left, was leaning back in her chair, clapping her hands. "'Oh, you naughty old thing!' she was crying. At the sight of his wife, Mr. Stiffson's jaw dropped, and the coffee cup slipped from his nerveless hands. It struck the edge of the table, and emptied its contents down the opening of his low-cut waistcoat. At the sight of the abject terror on Mr. Stiffson's face, Sissy Boy ceased to clap her hands, and, turning her head, met Mrs. Stiffson's uncompromising stare and Bindle's appreciative grin. Jabez! It was like the uninflected accents of doom. Mr. Stiffson shivered. That was the only indication he gave of having heard. 
with unblinking eyes he continued to gaze at his wife as if fascinated the empty coffee cup resting on his knees jabez repeated mrs stiffson i thought i told you to wear your tweed mixture to-day mrs stiffson had a fine sense of the dramatic the unexpectedness of the remark caused mr stiffson to blink his eyes like a puzzled owl without however removing them from his wife or changing their expression sissy boy laughed bindle grinned won't you sit down it was sissy boy who spoke silence hussy there was no anger in mrs stiffson's voice it was just a command and an expression of opinion sissy boy rose the light of battle in her eyes bindle pushed past mrs stiffson and stood between the two women look ere mum he said we likes manners in this ere flat and we're a-goin to have them see sorry if i irked your feelings this ain't a woman's club hold your tongue fool the deep voice thundered oh no you don't said bindle cheerfully looking up at his mountainous antagonist you can't frighten me i ain't married to you now you just be civil listen cried sissy boyd with flashing eyes don't you go giving me the bird like that or she paused at a loss with what to threaten her guest it's all right miss said bindle you just leave her to me i got one of my own at home she's going to speak to me she is mrs stiffson's efforts of self-control were proving unequal to the occasion her breathing became laboured and her voice husky what is my husband doing in this person's flat demanded mrs stiffson apparently of no one in particular there was something like emotion in her voice well mum responded bindle e was eatin bacon and eggs and drinkin coffee how dare you appear before my husband like that mrs stiffson turned fiercely upon sissy boy you brazen creature anger was now taking possession of her here easy on old thing said sissy boy seeing mrs stiffson's rising temper and entirely regaining her own good humour i repeat said mrs stiffson what is my husband doing in your company ask him what he's doing in my flat countered sissy boy triumphantly look here mum broke in bindle in a soothing voice it's no use a playin amlet in a rage you just sit down and talk it over friendly like and perhaps i can get a drop of old richard from old sedgy it's sort of been a shock to you mum i can see well things do look bad anyhow royal richard'll bring you round in two ticks mrs stiffson turned upon bindle a look that was meant to annihilate bindle glanced across at mr stiffson who was mechanically rubbing the middle of his person with a napkin his eyes still fixed upon his wife because your husband gets into the wrong duds continued bindle ain't no reason why you should get into an owling temper is it there was a knock at the door and without waiting for a reply mrs sedge entered wearing a canvas apron and a crape bonnet on one side and emitting an almost overpowering aroma of royal richard in her hand she carried a large bowl of porridge marching across to the table she dumped it down in front of mr stiffson ain't there just like a man forgettin off what he ought to remember she remarked and without waiting for a reply she stumped out of the room banging the door behind her bindle sniffed the air like a hound that's royal richard what you can smell mum he explained sissy boy laughed ignoring the interruption mrs stiffson returned to the attack i demand an explanation her voice shook with suppressed fury listen cried sissy boy if your boy will come and sleep in my flat sleep in your flat cried mrs stiffson in something between a roar and a scream sleep in your flat she turned upon her husband jabez did you hear that oh you villain you liar you monster but but my dear protested mr stiffson becoming articulate oscar was here all the time sissy boy giggled so that is why you have put on your best clothes you deceiver you viper you scum steady on mum broke out bindle he ain't big enough to be all them things besides if you starts a megaphonin like that you'll have all the other bunnies a-runnin to see what's appenin and if you was to ear number seven's language and see what queenie calls her face mr s might be a widower before e knew it where did you meet this person demanded mrs stiffson of her husband who now that the coffee was cooling began to feel chilly and was busily engaged in trying to extract the moisture from his garments where did you meet her repeated his wife in in the bathroom responded mr stiffson weakly mrs stiffson gasped and stood speechless with amazement i heard a splashing broke in sissy boy and i peeped in 
i only just peeped in really and really and then we had a little friendly chat in the all explained bindle and after breakfast we was going to talk things over and see how we could manage so that you didn't know your bathroom roared mrs stiffson at length the true horror of the situation at last seeming to dawn upon her my husband in your bathroom jabez she turned on mr stiffson once more like a raging fury you heard were you in this creature's bathroom mr stiffson paused in the process of endeavouring to extract coffee from his exterior eh eh he began answer me shouted mrs stiffson were you or were you not in this person's bathroom yes er but began mr stiffson mrs stiffson cast a frenzied glance round the room action had become necessary violence imperative her roving eye lighted on the bowl full of half-cold porridge that mrs sedge had just brought in she seized it and with a swift inverting movement crashed it down upon her husband's head with the scream of a wounded animal mr stiffson half rose then sank back again in his chair his hands clutching convulsively at the basin fixed firmly upon his head by the suction of its contents from beneath the rim the porridge gathered in large pendulous drops and slowly lowered themselves upon various portions of mr stiffson's person leaving a thin filmy thread behind as if reluctant to cut off all communication with the basin bindle and sissy boy went to the victim's assistance and bindle removed the basin it parted from mr stiffson's head with a juicy sob of reluctance whilst his rescuers were occupied in their samaritan efforts mrs stiffson was engaged in describing her husband's character beginning with a request for someone to end his poisonous existence she proceeded to explain his place or rather lack of place in the universe she traced the coarseness of his associates to the vileness of his ancestors she inquired why he had not been to the front mr stiffson was over fifty years of age why he was not in the volunteers then slightly elevating her head she demanded of heaven why he was permitted to live she traced all degradation including that of the lower animals to the example of such men as her husband he was the breaker-up of homes in some way or other connected with the increased death rate and infant mortality the indirect cause of the income tax and directly responsible for the war she even hinted that he was to some extent answerable for the defection of russia from the allied cause whilst she was haranguing bindle and sissy boy with the aid of dessert spoons were endeavouring to remove the porridge from mr stiffson's head it had collected behind his spectacles forming a succulent pad before each eye bindle listened to mrs stiffson's tirade with frank admiration language always appealed to him ain't she a corker he whispered to sissy boy corks out now any old how was the whispered reply then mrs stiffson did a very feminine thing she gave vent to three short sharp snaps of staccatoed laughter and suddenly collapsed upon the sofa in screaming hysterics sissy boy made a movement towards her bindle laid an arresting hand upon her arm you just leave her be miss he said i know all about them little games she'll come too all right what in the hell is that damn porter the voice of number seven burst in upon them from the outer door here i am sir sang out bindle then why the corruption aren't you in your room bawled number seven bindle slipped quickly out into the corridor to find number seven bristling with rage because old damn and op it i can't be in two places at once he said whilst bindle was engaged with number seven mrs stiffson had once more galvanized herself to action still screaming and laughing by turn she wheeled out of the flat with incredible rapidity and made towards the lift hi stop her stop her shouted bindle bolting after mrs stiffson followed by number seven police police murder murder screamed mrs stiffson she reached the lift and with an agility that would have been creditable in a young goat slipped in and shut the gates with a clang just as bindle arrived the lift began slowly to descend in a fury of impatience mrs stiffson began banging at the buttons with the result that the lift stopped halfway between the two floors bindle and number seven shouted down instructions but without avail the lift had stuck fast mrs stiffson shrieked for help shrieked for the police and shrieked for vengeance damned old tiger cat cried number seven leave her where she is bindle turned upon him a face radiating smiles 
them's the best words i've heard from you yet sir and he walked upstairs to reassure the occupants of number six that fate and the lift had joined the intent against mrs stiffson it was four hours before mrs stiffson was free but mr stiffson his luggage his thermos flask and oscar had fled sissy boy was at rehearsal and bindle had donned his uniform it was a chastened mrs stiffson who wheeled out of the lift and inquired for her husband and it was a stern and official bindle who told her that mr stiffson had gone and warned her that any further attempt at disturbing the cloistral peace of fulham square mansions would end in a prosecution for disorderly conduct and mrs stiffson departed in search of her husband end of chapter ten read by don w jenkins rancho san diego california shaggybark.blogspot.com